Hello, in this screencast we will look at how to use the Zoom integration in Canvas. This integration is already installed for you, however it is completely optional for you to enable it for students or not. If you are already using Zoom with your students, you will see several benefits to using it through Canvas. First of all, it is really easy to create meetings right in Canvas. Second of all, you can have your students click on the Zoom button from the left navigation menu in Canvas to be able to join meetings or access recordings. My favorite part of the Zoom integration with Canvas is that when you have a meeting where students follow the link on the navigation menu to join, Zoom will capture their Canvas username as their name in Zoom. This prevents students from typing in uh, different names and misrepresenting themselves. To start using the Zoom integration with Canvas, you'll just go to any course. You will need to do this for any course that you want to use Zoom with. Click on Settings, and then make sure you are on the Navigation tab. Zoom is most likely all the way at the bottom. You can drag it to the top or just click on those three buttons and say Enable. You will need to click on the Save button at the bottom of the page before proceeding. Now we will see Zoom in that left menu. If I click Zoom, it will open up my settings for the Zoom meetings. You will probably not have anything in there yet. Um, if you were previously a Zoom user, you can import a meeting into your Canvas course by clicking on those three dots and then import meeting. When you do that, it's going to ask for the meeting ID, which you can find in your Zoom interface, either installed on your computer or zoom.us. The other option is to schedule the meeting directly in Canvas. I have a couple of examples here that I have created, and I'll show you the steps. We'll schedule a new meeting. It's by default going to choose the topic as your course name. And you can change that if you want. I have played with a couple of different options, and I think my favorite is naming it by the date and period. So currently we have classes, our A day classes are on Monday, Wednesday, and our B day classes on Tuesday, Thursday. So I might say Monday, Wednesday, period four, and then I'll put in our times, which are 102 to 2. 25. I can add a description if I'd like. And then you'll see that I can put in a date and schedule it to reoccur every week on Monday and Wednesday. I have a little different um, setup that I'm going to show you here. The reason that I don't love, this is an example that I was just doing and I set up the reoccurring meeting to go weekly on Tuesdays and Thursdays and ending at the end of the quarter. If you do it in this way, I'm just going to click save so that we can see what it looks like for students. It will populate all of those meetings and it has the date on the left, which is nice, but you could see if I had four periods of classes, this list would get really, really long. So I think a better option would be to just choose, you're going to click reoccurring, but instead of daily or weekly, we're going to choose no fixed time. What this does is it creates a meeting room, uh, a Zoom meeting for my period four class that I can open and close at any time. So my period four class is going to use the exact same meeting room every time. We are going to leave a registration required unclicked. Students do not have a Zoom account, so we are not going to click that registration. We'll leave passcode. I know this looks like it is complicated to type in, but students don't actually have to enter that passcode. They're just going to click Zoom, and this passcode will be embedded in the URL. So we can leave it. You, you can change it if you'd like, but it's, it's unnecessary. In these settings, we are deciding if we want our host or participants' videos to be automatically off or on at the start of the meeting. 
you can decide uh, which you prefer. I kind of like off and then when students are ready or when you as the host is ready, you can turn it on in the meeting. This is just the default setting when people enter. So it can be changed once it is, once you are in the meeting. We'll leave audio to both. And then we're gonna leave this unchecked, that enable join before host. If this is a regular class meeting, I would probably leave mute participants upon entry. If you are making this to work with a small group, then we might want to unclick this. Uh, but if you're working with an entire class, you'll probably want to keep it checked. We're, we'll talk about this a little bit later, but for now we're going to leave that personal meeting ID unchecked. We're not going to re require authentication. And then we are going to record the meeting automatically. I would recommend in the cloud because there are some transcription options when we record it in the cloud. It's also very easy for students to access when we do it in the cloud. So we'll click save. And now I have delete, edit, or start this meeting. I'm just going to click course meetings so I can see now I have periods one, two, three, and four for my Monday, Wednesday classes. I'll show you quick what it looks like from the student view. So if we go into student view, you'll be able to see what it looks like for students. And when they click on Zoom, which you'll have to kind of train them to click on Zoom, I wouldn't recommend sharing the links to these meetings. I would just talk to students about when you're ready to join a Zoom meeting, you just click on Zoom on the left and then choose the appropriate period. So they'll click join and then they'll be in the meeting. It's it is similar for you when you are ready to join the meeting. I'll leave the student view here. And those buttons, if I were to click on the Zoom, now I just have a start or delete. Start means that I'm gonna start that meeting. So if it's period four, I'll click start and Zoom will begin so I can start hosting that meeting. When the meetings are over, Students will be able to click on the cloud recordings and then they'll be able to view any of the recordings for that day. For our meetings that are on Fridays, they will be slightly different. So our upcoming meetings that we have here, these are for all of my students that are in this English language arts or this playground course that I have, but let's say I have a creative writing class. So I have more than one Canvas course. If on Fridays I want all of my students to be able to come to the same meeting, whether they're in my creative writing or my English class, I have to create the meeting in a little bit different manner. So I'm going to schedule one more meeting showing the settings that I would use for a Friday office hours that could be used in multiple courses. So I can add a description if I would like. I'm going to use the same format that I had earlier where I'm going to choose reoccurring and then I'm going to say no fixed time. I'll leave the passcode on. For this one I'm probably not going to mute participants upon entry because on Fridays it's more likely that I'm going to be working with small groups of students. I am going to turn on that personal meeting ID. And the reason is, is because when I go to my creative writing course and I create this meeting, I'm also going to click used personal meeting ID. That way, whether a student is clicking to join this meeting from my creative writing class or from my English class, they will both come into my meeting where I am on Fridays. Again, we'll leave this unchecked. The require authentication to join. And then on this one, I may not want to post publicly my uh, individual group meetings with students, but I may still want a recording for myself. So I might choose to post it or to record it onto my local computer. So I click save. And then I'm going to click course meeting so I can see the list. So you can see that students will have an option of clicking those Friday office hours, or they could select their period.
So my last step would then be to navigate to any other courses that I have, and I would create my meetings for every period, and then uh, my Friday office hours. For the each course, students can only see the Zoom meetings created in that course. So you will need to repeat this process in every course, Canvas course that you teach. Please let your EdTech know if you have any questions. Thanks.